Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, Scold Lotus Popper MTG here. Uh, today we're going to be doing a little uh, blind previewing of the Wilds of El Drain. Um, we're pretty well into the spoiler season. Uh, Mythic spoiler has already said it's 155 of 233, so we're pretty well into the spoiler season. <clears throat> but what we're going to do today is we're just going to do a blind review of the commons that are going to be released so obviously there are still a bunch of cards that haven't been uh released or spoiled yet but we're just going to go through and kind of take a look at uh the cards that have already been released so um i'll have to scroll down here quite a bit so i got quite a bit of mythics and rares um i'm pretty excited for the set hopefully they got some cool stuff um hopefully they don't put anything too broken out we don't want to have another like Oko or nothing in, you know, multiple formats. Uh, even, like, the Great Henge was a pretty dope card, but... <laughs> so, uh, I doubt we'll get anything that powerful and popper. So, so the first card in here is... Looks like Into the Fey Court, 3 blue blue, sorcery speed, draw 3 cards, create a 1-1 one, one blue fairy creature token with flying, and this creature can only block other creatures with flying. It's not bad. Um, we just got, uh, Lorien revealed, so it's pretty much the same thing, but instead of island cycling, you get a blue, or 1-1 one, one blue fairy with flying, so, um, it can only block creatures with flying, so, uh, it might be okay against maybe fairies, but, eh, it's not too great, um, nothing too special. Next card, it's Ice Out. It's a colorless blue blue for instant speed and bargain. Um, bargain is a new mechanic, apparently. You may sacrifice an artifact, attachment, enchantment, or token as you cast the spell. So, bargain is basically like a sacrifice cost. This spell costs one less to cast if it's bargain, counter target spell. So, it's counter spell. On the, on the good end, it's counter spell if you sacrifice one of those three things. On the bad side, it's cancel. So I don't think that's going to be breaking any breaking any formats here soon. Moving on, we got Brave the Wilds, a sorcery. Again, got bargain. If the spell was bargain, target land you control becomes a 3-3 elemental creature with haste. It's still a land. Uh, search your library for a basic land, reveal it, put it in your hand, then shuffle. Um, it's not bad. Uh, I don't see what decks it could fit into. But um, for one green and you sacrifice an artifact, enchantment, or token, you get a 3-3 elemental creature with haste. And you get to search your deck for land and put it in your hand. That's not bad for one. Um, this one's in German. So I'm pretty sure German. I can't understand that. So we're going to pass on that. I'm assuming it might be like three blind mice or something, judging from the three mice in the picture. Anyway, uh, next one is Johan's Stopgap. So three and a blue. Sorcery, again, got Bargain. Bargain must be like the big new mechanic for this set. I don't know. Anyway, this spell costs two less to cast if it's a bargained return target nine land permanent to its owner's hand. Draw a card. We have a bunch of those already in uh, the format. And basically, it's like blue and a colorless return target permanent. And then blue and a colorless again for a kicker cost to draw cards. So this isn't anything new. And this is sorcery speed anyway. So the other ones um, are instant speed. So much better options. Hopeless Nightmare for a black. It's an enchantment. When Hopeless Nightmare enters the battlefield, each opponent discards a card and loses two life. Eh, not bad. When Hopeless Nightmare is put in a graveyard... From the battlefield, scry two. Well, that's not too bad, I guess. I mean, for one, uh, they, each opponent discards a card, and you and they lose two life. And then you also get the scry when it's put in the graveyard, and it has its own built-in ability. But otherwise, uh, with all these bargain abilities, you pay a black, and then you just bargain it away with some other ability. So this isn't too bad and limited. I, I don't know if it would be good and constructed pauper but it's a it's, it's interesting uh beanstalk worm four and a green oh so we got adventures are back again 
Um, so the sort of the adventure is a colorless and green. You may play an additional land this turn. So like it's kind of like an explore. And then the creature is a 5-4 with reach for 4 and a green. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe we'll find a spot in Mono Green Tron. I don't know. Uh, return Triumphant. One in a white sorcery. Return target creature with converted man cost three or less. From your graveyard to the battlefield. Create a young hero roll token attached to it. So it's like recommission. It just can't hit artifacts. So what's a young hero roll? So it's enchanted creature has whenever this creature attacks. If its toughness is three or less, put a plus one plus one counter on it. And if you put another roll on this creature later, put this in the graveyard. Oh, okay. So if it's like a weaker creature with a uh, weaker toughness, it gradually will build it up to three, and then it stops basically. So moving on. Oh, oh, we got sleight of hand back. Huh, interesting. Well, sleight of hand's nothing new, but um, blue for sorcery. Look at type two cards. The library put one in your hand, and the other one in the bottom of the library. So. If it hasn't been used in Popper yet, I don't think it's going to, but it's kind of interesting that it will be in Standard again for the duration of the cycle. Not dead after all. Okay, so I've seen some, I've seen some chatter about this. Um, we have Feign Death already, and this is pretty much a better Feign Death. I know in Modern, Rakdos Scam uses the Feign Death with the Evoke costs. Uh, but this one supposedly is better. So for black at instant speed, it says until the end turn, target creature you control gains. Whenever this creature dies, return to the battlefield tapped under its owner's control, then create a wicked roll token attached to it. And a wicked token is enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one. When this ore is put in the graveyard, each opponent loses one life. Oh, okay. So it's basically feign death, but it gets also when the ore is put in the graveyard, loses one life. So it gets a little bit of, ping damage in there so i don't know it's not too bad we have feign death but this is a little bit better this might see some play maybe in some weird demir terror decks maybe some reanimator where they don't run a, a huge creature count so the creatures they do have really matter so you know if they try and remove it you just chain this to it and then you get your creature back and it's bigger so moving on we have cut in it's a three in red sorcery. Cut and deals four damage to a target creature. Create a young hero roll token attached to up to one target creature you control. Yeah, this is this is not that good. Um, three in a red at sorcery speed uh, to deal four damage to a target creature. That's super slow. And uh, then the young hero roll token just isn't that great of a bonus. So I'm not a big fan of this. Uh, Return to the wilds. Two in a green sorcery speed. So it's a modal card. Choose two. Uh, search your library for a basic land card. Put it onto the battlefield tapped. Then shuffle. It's not bad. Create a 1-1 one, one white human creature token. Not bad. Create a food token. Eh. Uh, I mean, for three, you get two options. I guess maybe it's not terrible, but it's nothing, you know, format breaking, so... Uh, break the spell for a white instant destroy target enchantment. If a permanent you controlled or a token was destroyed this way, draw a card. Hmm. This isn't terrible. Um, but I don't know why you would ever want to destroy your own enchantment unless it had to do with this this these cards here. Um, I have there's so many better options in Papa right now for destroying enchantments. Um, this eh, I don't know. This doesn't seem like it would be that great. Uh, moving on, Living Lectern. Let's see. One in a blue for an artifact creature construct. And it's pay one. Sacrifice Living Lectern. Draw a card. Create a sorcerer roll token. So we have a bunch of different rolls, basically. Uh, attached to up to one target creature you control. Activate only the sorcery. So the sorcerer roll token is enchanted creature. Gets plus one, plus one. And has whenever this creature attacks, scry one. Well, it's not bad. Uh, I mean, out of the other rolls I've read so far, this one seems to be probably the, the coolest. Uh, scrying is always powerful. Uh, I don't know how powerful it would be in Constructed Popper, but um, definitely pretty good and limited. Uh, so, yeah, I like this one. 
Um, rat out for a black instant. Up to one target creature gets neg one, neg one until the end turn. You create a one, one black rat token with this creature can't block. Uh, mm, I don't know. Neg one, neg one doesn't really hit a whole lot in, in pauper format, to be honest. And the one, one black rat that can't block is not relevant i mean if it could block it might be it would be pretty okay but since the creature the token can block i don't i don't find it that great moving on we have flick coin two and a red for instant speed flick a coin deals one damage to any target you create a treasure token and you draw a card hmm this one is interesting so the deals one damage to any target isn't super relevant because it doesn't kill a lot of things in the format, but it, I mean, it, I, I guess it could. It says any target, so I mean, you could you could hit the opponent. So it's like mm, deal one, create treasure, draw card. Okay, so that's not too bad for for three at instant speed. Um, yeah, so you're gonna get to draw a card so it replaces itself. You create a treasure, so you're generating mana back. And you deal one damage, so that's not bad. I like this card. It's pretty decent. Where if it ever sees play in constructed popper, I don't know. But I mean, I guess we'll we'll find out. So um let's see. Moving on, we have Root Rider Fawn. Uh colorless and a green for a creature sayer scout. Tap to add green or pay one and tap filter, add one man of any color into one three. Yeah, we just have, we already have a bunch of dudes that could filter man out and it's that are better and cheaper. Um, I mean, this is pretty good and limited. Uh, mana fixing is always good and limited, but for constructed popper, I just don't see this being that great. Uh, moving on, uh, Besada Knight, three and a white. It's another adventure card. So the adventure side is for one white, create a royal roll token attached to target creature you control. Enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one, and has ward one. Okay, so this one's pretty good too, actually. I like this one. So you're going to give, basically, you're going to, for one white, you're going to make an aura that's going to give something plus one, plus one, and has ward one. That's not terrible. Um, I could see it maybe sliding into mono white auras so like heroic um since heroic doesn't have a lot of hex proof other than like hyena umbra the fact that this gives it ward one that's not terrible and then for three and a white for the creature side you get a three three that's mediocre but the uh betroth the beast sorcery adventure that's pretty decent uh moving on you have a warehouse tabby oh look at the cat look at him oh in the background, there's like a hundred rats with glowing eyes. That's not good. <laughs> so, uh, warehouse tabby for black. You get a cat. Whenever an enchantment you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, create a one-one black rat creature token with this creature can't block. Uh, and then pay one in a black warehouse tabby gains death touch to the end turn. So you're paying basically three to get a one-one death toucher. And Whenever a champion control is put in the graveyard. So I'm again probably resolve or regarding the bargain ability. Yeah, this card's just way too much going on. I don't see it fitting into any decks at all. But it's a cool artwork. I like that. And then it says uh there's a flavor text says for every rat she kills, ten more take its place. Yeah, that's that's the truth about rats. Uh, moving on, we have rat catcher trainee. Uh, so the uh, adventure side is an instant called Pest Problem for two and a red. Create two one one black rat creature tokens with this creature can block. So, um, so for three you're gonna get two creatures that can block. That's pretty bad rate to be honest. And then one in red is as long as your turn rat catcher training has first strike. So you're paying two for a two one first striker. It's not that impressive. Uh, next one is Sky Beast Tracker, three and a green, and it has reach, and it says whenever you cast a spell with mana value five or greater, create a food token. That's kind of cool for four, and it's two four, so it'll survive a bolt. So, I play a mono green Tron deck, 
and its biggest weakness is getting burned out and killed real fast in the beginning. So, not that this would take a lot of places of the other cards in the deck, but it would be kind of cool to include this because this is a four mana, so I could hit it off of the Cascade cards in that mono green Tron. Um, yeah, that's not too bad. And whenever you cast a spell with mana value five or greater, create a food token. So, like, a lot of uh, the Cascade decks or the Tron decks um, that play, like, big Tron, big Cascade, all their Cascade dudes are over five. Uh, so, this could definitely become relevant because then it makes food tokens and you could sacrifice them to gain the life back that you've been getting, you know, pummeled at earlier. So, this isn't too bad. I might try this when this, you know, comes out. Moving on, we have Sweet Tooth Witch for two and a black. Uh, Human Warlock. When Sweet Tooth Witch enters the battlefield, create a food token. And it has two. Sacrifice a food. Target player loses two life. For, and it's a three. Oh! So, it's basically, like, reverse food. So, instead of you gaining three life, you're, you're making a player lose two life. Um... Because it's, it's practically the same cost. Because if you were to pay the cost of the of the, the food, it's two and tap. Except for her ability is two sack of food. That'd be kind of cool. Um, is it super relevant and a really good deck? No. But uh, foods have been gaining a lot of traction here lately. And yeah, maybe you could make a reverse food burn deck. I don't know. But it's cool though. Uh, moving on, we have Torch the Tower for a red instant, and it has Bargain. Again, Bargain is, uh, you may sacrifice an artifact, enchantment, or token as you cast the spell. It says, Torch the Tower deals 2 damage to the target creature or Planeswalker. If this spell with Bargain instead, it deals 3 damage to that permanent, and you scry one. If a permanent dealt damage by Torch the Tower would be dot or would die this turn in exile instead. Uh, I don't know. If it was any target, I would say this is a great card. But because it's only target creature and planeswalkers are relevant for Pauper, it's pretty subpar. Even even with the Scry 1 and the Exile this turn, the Exile thing's only relevant, I guess, and I don't even know what it would be relevant against. Because the decks that you'd want to get cards exiled they can most times they could just in response uh sack it or there's outlets for it so i would say this could be a decent card but it's held back by the fact that it's target creature or planeswalker so uh, next we have troublemaker oof oof uh, uh colorless and green for a creature oof and it has bargain and it says, when Troublemaker Oof enters the battlefield, if it was Bargain, Exile, Target, Artifact, or Enchantment, and Opponent Controls, and it's a 2-2. So, this is just a strictly worse version of Masked Vandal from Call Time. Because I think Masked Vandal is a 1-3. Uh, so, it's a little bit more resilient. Um, also, you don't have to sacrifice a Artifact, Enchantment, or Token to get Masked Vandal's ability, which is it practically the same thing as this. You just have to exile a creature from the graveyard, which is much easier and much more, uh, doesn't, not much of a drawback compared to this, so, uh, I don't care for this. Uh, let's see here, last two, looks like Conceited Witch, two and a black, oh, so it has Adventure, Price of Beauty is a black sorcery, create a wicked roll token, attach to target creature you control, so, um, yeah, so it says, then exile this card, you may cast the creature from... Uh, I think Wicked Roll Token was the one that's, uh, it comes back, or it gets plus one, plus one, and when it dies, it, uh, you deal one damage to the opponent. So, uh, it's okay. And then it's a two and a black for a two, three menace. Um, not super relevant. Uh, I don't see it fitting in anywhere. And then the last one is Rowan's Grim Search, two and a black for instant. It's got bargain. And if this spell was bargain, look at the top four cards of your library, then up, put up to two of them back on the top of your library in any order, and the rest in your graveyard. You lose two cards and lose two life. Okay, so, so for two and a black, you're going to get draw two cards and lose two life. But if you bargain, 
uh, you get to look at the top four and put any two of them back on top of your library and anywhere in the rest in your graveyard. Then you draw a two. So you're basically surveilling four. Yeah. So it's basically surveilling four because you're going to look at top four, put two of them back on top, and two in the graveyard. So surveil four. And then you draw the two that you put back on top and you lose two life. So for three and a sacrifice, you're getting like somewhat surveil four. This one's not bad. Um, I actually... I actually think this would be somewhat decent in Grixis Affinity. Yeah, because you have a lot of artifacts that you want to sack to get the effect from when they are destroyed. So you could ultimately cast that at instant speed, sack the artifact, and then you get to look at the top four, put two in the graveyard, and then draw two and lose two. So it's a weird like version of um, Read the Bones, but with the bargain out or bargain sack outlet, you're able to destroy the artifacts you want to get rid of. So I could see it maybe being tested out in Grixis affinity. Um, is it groundbreaking for the format? No, but at this point, there's not a lot of uh, powerful commons that have been released. So, but it's only August 18th. So we still have um, a little bit of time left before everything is revealed. I think pre-release is in like two weeks, and uh, it looks like we have what's 45, 78 more cards to go. So hopefully in 78 cards, we get a at least a couple cards for Popper that are going to be pretty sweet. But um, yeah, so that's, uh, that's all I got for you right now. Um, if there's any uh, new, new commons that release after this video, I'll definitely touch up on them, do a separate video. But yeah. Uh, as for, uh, as for this video, that's all I got. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, give me a thumbs up, and uh, I'll see you in the next video.